Hey guys, I apologize for not getting a video up yesterday when I recorded it somehow. Um, it erased off of my computer after I saved it and I don't really know what happened. But here I am making a new video on Thursday. So the question that Sloth raised from our video last week was that as we rest in our union with Christ and, and it, He is the wisdom from God for us, does that mean that every moment we're going to make the right decision? Does that mean that we can just sit back and know that 100% of the time we're going to make the right choice? Well, my answer to this is is no. That's not exactly what I was wanting to say. I, the, the reality of our union with Christ is that in our spirit, He has given us everything that we need. We no longer lack anything. We've been made whole and complete in Christ. And as 1 Corinthians 1, 30 says uh, that He has become for us the wisdom from God, then we can have wisdom. We have wisdom in our spirit. So you bring up James 1, 5. And that says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who is generous and gracious to give. Well, the way I, I look at James 1, 5 is the way I look at the way Paul writes in Romans that the thing that he wants to do, he doesn't do. And the thing that he doesn't want to do, he does. And he reckons that this is not himself, but this is the flesh that lives in him. You see, Paul distinguishes here that that his reality, his identity, who he really is, is found in his spirit, is one with Christ, united forever in this relationship with God. However, when he chooses sin, when he chooses to go against what is right and what he knows to be right, he sins. And this is his flesh that he's giving control. This is the flesh that's leading him this way. And and that's also why I think in Galatians 5 he writes that you've been set free, so don't turn back to the yoke of slavery. See, Paul is writing that we can turn back. It doesn't mean that we lose our identity. It doesn't mean that we lose our union with Christ. But it does mean that we turn ourselves back, allowing our flesh to control us. So what Paul's writing here is not that we have two natures, but that we have a nature in Christ forever united with Him, and we have a flesh, which is the self-life. It's us trying to do life on our own. That's the life we've been set free from. Before Christ, we, we had no other way of living. We were dead in our spirit. And so for us to do life, we had to try to do it on our own. This is what we see in the garden with Adam and Eve. They fall because they look and see that the fruit is good. They determine for themselves, living on their own, independent of God. And when that happens, they have to figure out how to do this life. And so you see them chaotically scrambling around, trying to figure out how to cover themselves, how to take care of themselves. So what I see in James 5 is not this um, plea for us to try so hard and search out this wisdom, but to really say, if I'm not experiencing rest in this life, if I am anxiously wondering about which choice I need to make. If I am longing for wisdom because I just am making foolish choices, it's not that we are void of wisdom. In Christ, we have all that we need, as Ephesians 1, 3 says. So what I think James is writing here is that if we're not experiencing wisdom, just ask God. He's already given it. He's not withholding. He's generous with it. He wants you to experience it in this life. So like it, in Galatians 5, we talked about earlier where it says it's for freedom that we've been set free. We, God just didn't set us free so that we can say we're free. He set us free for us to experience and enjoy His freedom, true freedom. That which no one can ever take away. The freedom from ourselves of having to do this life independent of God. For we were only created to live in Christ and for Him to live in us, to live through us in this world, expressing His life. And so if in your soul you're in turmoil over decisions, ask God for wisdom because in your spirit He's already given it. And the reality of who we are in our spirit is one with Christ after salvation. And as He's made us one with Him and given us everything that we need, the way He's created us is to flow out of our spirit, as John says, he, that from the innermost being will flow rivers of rushing water. 
You see, He's made us to to have in our spirit to ex, to have life, and in our soul to experience that life, and in our bodies to express that life. And so as he lives in us, we get to experience his life and all that that means, which is goodness, kindness, love, peace, and wisdom, among other things. And as we experience that, we live that out. As he's living in us, he's living through us, we're choosing dependence on him, for only he can live those things. And so as we go through this life, it's not passive, but it is dependent. It's dependent on Him living in us, living through us, and us choosing in each moment not to base our decision off of what we can see, but base our decision off of who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us, allowing His life to fully live in and through us. He's that good that not only can He do that, but He wants to do that, and He promised that He would. So I hope that I've answered your question. If I haven't, leave another one. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this. I, uh, I love getting to do this, and I love hearing from you. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Grace and peace.